All right, now that I have my swing arm mounted, I can see where I may have a bit of a problem. The swing arm is coming up and it's hitting the center brace, uh, not allowing the cage to go all the way to the floor of the trap. But this is one of the beauties of PVC pipe. I'll just take a little 45 degree fitting like this. I'll cut this swing arm right back here. We'll put that fitting in there and just put a bend in the swing arm and that way we'll avoid any clearance problems. All right, there's our swing arm after we've cut it in two. We've put a 45 degree coupler in here. Uh, this is still very lightweight and very tough. You don't have to glue this. I think you can just friction fit these together. Uh, not much pressure on those, so they should be fine. And now you can see, when we put that in the elevator, now the cage goes all the way to the floor of the trap. There are no clearance problems with the swing arm back here. And I think we're ready to balance this thing and tune it. Okay, now we're ready to balance and tune this trap. Really nothing to it. We go back here on the end of the swing arm where we drill that hole. We put our quarter inch bolt up through the hole. And then we'll just put washers on there and see what it takes to trip the trap. Uh, I'll try this one first. That one will go ahead and trip it. Maybe a little lighter washer. Uh, nothing. I'm going to go back to this original washer. That looked pretty close. And I'll go ahead and put a nut on that bolt to hold that washer in place. Now this trap elevator is assembled and ready to tune. The easiest way to tune one of these is with just good old American quarters. Now the way I tune one of these is I'll set a straight edge on top of this and then I'll take those quarters and put them in the trap one at a time. Now a male sparrow weighs about five quarters so you want this trap to trip with less. I like to use about three. So here's one quarter, two quarters, three quarters in the trap trips. The next step is to bore an escape hole so that the sparrow, once the trap trips, will enter the holding cage. So what I do is I'll push down on this, kind of look where the center of that cage is, the capture cage, and I'll mark a hole over here where I want to drill a hole so that the sparrow can go into the to the uh, holding cage. Now I'll just take a two inch hole saw and bore a hole where we marked our escape hole. Alright now we have the escape hole bored in the bottom of the trap. Now I have to put a one-way door on that. Now a lot of people, a piece of woven wire like this, just woven wire that swings up and allows the sparrow to go in, but I like to use a little piece of uh, clear plexiglass. You can get this at any home center, and I'll just put that over the hole right there, and then I'll attach it with two little staples up at the top, just so it swings up. Once the sparrow goes down in the elevator and he sees that hole with that clear plexiglass, he'll immediately go into the holding cage and then this just shuts right behind him and he can't get back out. So I'll get that attached and then we'll move on. Okay, now we have our one-way door attached. So if when the sparrow goes down, he can come right out into the holding cage. And there's one final thing to do and then we'll have a functional elevator. I want to attach a little rim around this bait tray and all this does is it um, it keeps the seed and stuff up on the tray. When you put bait in here if you don't have something around here this will fall off. So I like to put just a little rim around there just to hold the bait Okay, you can see what I've got there. Whoops. That's stapled on there good. This is the bait tray. This will actually be inside the trap. And then I'll put a piece of woven wire on there. Like so. And this will keep the birds that are in the trap from escaping out of the trap. So we'll staple this on.
just like so. Now this is our bait tray. We'll put our swing arm back in. Now this elevator is ready to be installed in the trap. The sparrow lands on the pad, comes into the cage, dumps him down here, through the one-way door, and into the holding cage. Now I'm ready to insert the elevator into my woven wire. Uh, you can just buy this woven wire at any Home Depot store. As a matter of fact, I got this out of the window of a junk stock car. So, I mean, wherever you can find it. We just slide this trap, the, the elevator, in here like this. Once we get it flush, then we'll just staple it in. Now we have our elevator and it's stapled into our woven wire. You want to leave a flap like this on the end of your trap so that if you need to you can get in here and work on this swing arm. The swing arm just sets in there, it's not fastened in any way so it's easy to pick that up and take it out of there if you need to. You can also get in there and adjust the sensitivity by adding or taking away weight however you want to work that. And you can also actually set this to catch starlings. I like to use about ten quarters to tune one of these for starlings and that seems to work pretty good. Then when you get done just put your wire down Put a couple of staples in it. We're good to go. Okay folks, so there's our trap. We've slid the elevator into the wire, stapled it in. You can see that's ready to go to work. Moving freely. All I have left to do is to put the back piece in. And before I do that, I'll cut a door in this back piece. You want to make this door round so that when you put your arm in that, that it doesn't have a big gap around because those little sparrows will they'll fly right out around your arm if you put a square door in here. So you want a round door. So I'll go cut that door in right now. Now here is the end piece of our trap. We have our round door cut in. We've saved the piece to make the door. Now remember you're going to be reaching in and out of this, so make sure you take a piece of sandpaper and trim up any splinters or slivers that are around there. Now I have the back end installed in the trap. Here's our round door. The only thing I've done to attach the round door, I've just used a, a small galvanized hinge and then a simple hook and eye to hold the door shut. So here's our finished repeating bait trap. You can see they're not really that hard to build. And once you get the concept of the whole elevator deal with a high door in, low door out, it's pretty simple to build uh, nest box traps or any kind of bird traps you want to construct. That being said, if you decide to build one of these bird traps, just remember you have to check it every day. Because every now and then you will catch one of those native birds that you really don't want to harm. So make sure you check your trap every day, release those native good birds, and I hope this helps you out.